Okay, this is the last problem I'm going to do for now on variance of loss random variable. It's another discrete problem. It's a previous exam question. Um, so they tell us that we have a fully discrete 40-year endowment insurance with a benefit of one, and that that is issued to each of n people age x. You're given that the premium mistakenly charged is the benefit premium for a fully discrete 40-year term insurance of 1 on X. So first of all, when they use the term benefit premium, that's supposed to imply that they're calculated according to the equivalence principle. That was something that I missed for a really long time and ended up being really confused on how you're supposed to know how you're supposed to know that they're calculated according to the equivalence principle. So benefit premium equivalence principle, unless they know it otherwise. otherwise. So the premium mistakenly charged is the benefit premium for, I'm going to just call that P. What they really charge here is the benefit premium for a fully discrete 40-year term insurance of 1 on X. So that would be um, whoops. If it's calculated by the equivalence principle, it would be our 40-year term insurance over our 40-year annuity. Um, they give us the discount rate, the actuarial present value of 40-year term insurance, the actuarial present value of the 40-year endowment insurance, um, the second moment of that insurance, and then they tell us that losses are independent, that's really important for this problem, and that the total portfolio of losses is assumed to follow the normal distribution. So I'm doing this problem because historically I've had a hard time with these and I want to make sure I really understand it and I want to make sure you understand it. Um, the probability of a positive loss on the total portfolio, okay, so that's bad. We don't want a positive loss. We want a negative loss. The probability of a positive loss in the total portfolio is 95%. And they would like us to calculate N. So how many of these policies did we sell with this mistakenly charged premium? So the first thing here... The total portfolio of losses follows a normal distribution. It always helps me sort of draw out what that might look like. Um, they tell us that the probability of a positive loss, so the probability that the loss is greater than zero is 0.95. So we know that this is the same thing as saying the probability that z is greater than um, this corresponding z score here, Oops. which is the mean of our total portfolio minus zero, because we're looking at the probability of that, uh, um, I guess this shouldn't be. should be if L were to denote our, the loss on our total portfolio. Say total L. Um, so we have the mean of our total losses minus zero over the standard deviation of our total losses equals 95%. So I know that this has to correspond to some z-score. I just don't know what it is yet. I have to figure that out. Um, the probability that z is greater than, I'll leave out the zero here. Some z-score, which is the total, um, the mean of our total losses over the standard deviation of our total losses, the probability that z is greater than that is 0.95. So 
So then I can use my table. I'm going to find the corresponding z score on the other side so that the probability that z is less than this corresponding score is also 0.95. That turns out to be 1.645. So I know that this must be negative 1.645. Okay, let's be sure that we're clear on what this x bar and sigma bar. I'm saying that x bar is total expected losses. Um, the mean of our total expected losses and that sigma is the standard deviation or um, the square root of our variance of our total expected losses. Okay, let me get rid of this to make room. So the mean of our total expected losses is going to be, we sold n policies. Each policy has an expected loss, we'll say E of L, um, where L is the individual loss. <coughs> so the mean of our total expected losses will be n times the expected value of a single loss. Um, to get the standard deviation of our total expected losses, we'll look at the variance. The variance of our total expected losses um, since the losses are independent, it'll be n times the variance of a single loss. So that's why it's really important to know that our losses are independent. So our standard deviation then will be the square root of that. Okay, so just to clarify what we have so far and where we're going, we know we said that the mean of our total losses over the standard deviation of our total losses needs to be negative 1.645 for the probability um, that we have a positive loss on the total portfolio to be 95%. Or this needs to be negative 1.645 for the probability of our total losses being greater than zero is 95%. So we obviously need to find the expected value of a single loss and the variance of a single loss. Okay, so the loss random variable for this policy will be um, the insurances that they pay out, which they told us that this is a fully discrete 40-year endowment insurance of one issued to people age X. So the true present value of the insurance we pay out looks like that less the premiums that we bring in. Now, they mistakenly charged this premium. Okay, and I don't need my double bars under here because this had no, has really nothing to do with the um, true present value of this insurance and this annuity now. They estimated it in order to find the premium, and this is just a number. This is just a value of the premium um, that they're taking in. Times our annuity. It's a 40-year endowment insurance on X. So we make payments for 40 years, and we do want the true present value of that. Okay, so the expected value of this loss random variable is going to be the expected value of the true present value of this insurance, which is the actuarial present value of the insurance, 
minus our premium amount, which we said is the endowment insurance, or the term insurance, I'm sorry, is mistakenly charged as a term insurance over a 40-year annuity. The actuarial present value of, um, sorry, the expected value of the true present value of this annuity is the actuarial present value of the annuity. Okay, so these cancel. That's really nice. We're left with the actuarial present value of the endowment insurance minus the actuarial present value of the term insurance, um, which I guess you should note is the actuarial present value of the pure endowment insurance. Um, but they just give you these two values, and that works out to be 0 0.011. Okay, so that's our expected value of a single loss. That was one piece that we needed. And we also need to calculate the variance of a loss. Um, okay, so I know that these premiums have not been calculated according to the equivalence principle. Um, they were mistakenly charged as some other value. But I know that a general formula for the variance of a loss, and I know this again just from working it through so many times. I don't have it memorized. If I forgot it, I know that I could derive it again. And if you want to see me derive it, I did that in the first video of this series. Um, but I know that the variance of a loss is going to be 1 plus the premium over um, the appropriate interest rate, which is D squared times the second moment of our insurance, which is an endowment insurance, minus the actuarial present value of our insurance squared. Um, we're given this term insurance and the annuity, so we can calculate the value of the premium, and it works out to be about 0 0.02. And we have that D is 0 0.057, so this is 1 plus 0 0.02 over 0 0.057 squared. They gave us, I believe, they gave us the second moment of the endowment insurance, 0 0.0745. And we also have the actuarial present value of the endowment insurance is 0.268. So we already have everything we need to calculate that. And the variance works out to be 0 0.004, about 0 0.0049. So again, we're trying to find um, N such that the mean of the total expected losses over, oh, what is this? <laughs> over the standard deviation of our total expected losses is negative 1.645. So that was the z score that we determined we needed to have um, for um, the probability of being above that to be 95%. Okay, so we found, we said before that the mean mean of the total expected losses was n times the expected value of L. And we found the expected value of L to be 0 0.011. So this is 0 0.011n. We said that the standard deviation of the total expected losses um, was the square root of the variance, which is n times the variance of a single loss. And you remember that it's n times the variance of a single loss, only because each of the n losses um, are independent. The n losses are independent. Um, so this is the square root of n times the variance of L, which we found was 0 0.0049. Okay, so you can plug each of those in here and set it equal to negative 1.645, and you should get for n, I got 109.2105, so about 110. I hope 
that all made sense to you. Um, I hope it helped. Happy studying.